Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to talk you through one of the simple formulating issues that a lot of people have when they're first starting out and how to solve it, and that is when you have an emulsion that you've created with an excessive white rub out time. So what I mean here is when you have a cream that you've created and when you apply it to the skin, you find yourself rubbing it for a long time before it seems to soak into the skin. Uh, and also when you're rubbing it in, you, you see a lot of white on the skin. Now, what this is actually happening is it's micro foam and it's basically the emulsifiers catching air with the application uh, and it's just foam on the skin that lasts for a long time. Now there's a couple of ways that you can overcome this problem. I'm actually going to go through one of the best ways that you can overcome this problem um, while still building viscosity into your formulation. So first of all, I'm going to show you an example of the problem. Uh, which you're probably experiencing. And what I've done here is I've actually created a very natural product using very natural emulsifiers, natural oils, and I've done this because this is actually one of the formulation types where people experience the most problems, particularly when they're new to formulating. Um, the issues with this, of course, is if you are using uh, silicon or silicon-based lipids, uh, a lot of those materials actually decrease foam in a formulation, so they actually solve the problem before it happens. And the other reason it happens when you're making a lot of natural products is because the emulsifiers that you're using, you tend to need quite high quantities to build body into your emulsion. So if you don't use a significant proportion of emulsifiers, you'll find that your cream is more like a lotion or a low viscosity lotion. So one of the best ways to build viscosity into your emulsion is to use more of your emulsifying waxes. But the more emulsifying wax you use compared to the amount of lipid, the more chance you have of getting this micro foam or excess white rub in time occurring. So what I have here is just an example of a product. Now you can see it's reasonably viscous, so it's only slowly flowing there in the bowl. Um, you can see, again, reasonably viscous cream type consistency. And I'm going to now apply some and just rub it in and show you this product has a bit of microfoam happening. It's not too bad, but it's, it's more than we want to see for a product because consumers also perceive the effectiveness of a product by how quickly it appears to rub into the skin. Now, this isn't the case at all, but it is a consumer perception, and if you're gonna be formulating products, you need to be aware of consumer perception because that's exactly what they'll think when they're using your product. So you can see I've rubbed that in a fair bit, and I still have that white. So as you can see, it's a microfoam issue, now, one of the ways you can overcome this is to reduce the amount of emulsifier. So when you have excess emulsifier to lipid, you will potentially get this microfoam. The problem with reducing your emulsifier is it could reduce your stability and it will definitely reduce your viscosity. And as I mentioned, with a natural cream, one of the hardest challenges you'll have is to actually build the desired viscosity into the formulation. So you don't really want to reduce your emulsifiers. Um, you would you could increase your lipid content but again this example I've used here actually has 11% lipid so you don't really want to go a whole lot higher uh, because it could again destabilize the formula but more importantly we could then destroy the desired skin feel the product could feel too greasy um, it could start to cost too much to produce so you know around 11% lipid is, is really as high as we really want to go so we can't reduce the emulsifier because we'd reduce our viscosity uh, we can't increase our lipid, um, so we still have this emulsifier to lipid proportion problem, which is of course causing the microfoam that you're seeing. So what could we do instead? Well, there is a trick that we use that will actually help build viscosity further and at the same time eliminate the microfoam problem. And what I've done, I've actually done that in this sample here. You can see this one's actually more viscous. This one's hardly moving at all uh, and again even when I pick it up even more viscous so this is really achieving and solving some of our other formulation issues with creating a, a nice rich body moisturizer in a natural product using natural materials 
Um, and at the same time, I'll also show you that we have solved our microphone issue. So you can see this one goes onto the skin and rubs straight in. Now again, from a consumer perspective, that's what they want to see. They want to see a product that gets applied and is essentially looking like it's going straight into the skin. That's what they believe when they apply a product. So we need to make sure that we overcome this microfoam issue so that we're giving them the type of product that they're looking for, the performance aspects. And again, one of the ways they judge that is if they perceive the product is penetrating into the skin and doing its job straight away. Um, now these two formulas that I've actually prepared are extremely similar except for one vital difference. What I have done in the second sample, I have added 2% of a low HLB emulsifier. I've kept the lipid content the same, I've kept the high HLB emulsifiers that I've used in the first sample exactly the same, same types, same amounts. The only thing I've done in the second sample is I have used 2% of a low HLB emulsifier. Now what this does, it brings down the overall HLB value of the formulation. So in effect, in effect it reduces the emulsifier to lipid ratio if you like so that then I am not getting an excess of foam trapped when the product is being applied. Now if you add too much low HLB emulsifier you'll actually destabilize your formula but if you add a small proportion and in this case as I've done 2% because it's a high melting point waxy emulsifier it actually builds more viscosity, builds more body into my cream it doesn't destabilize it, it's still very capable of stabilizing 11% lipid and it uh, eliminates that microfoam issue. So if you're looking to build body into your creams, particularly your natural creams, then use more waxy emulsifiers, but don't get caught in a trap of using only high HLB emulsifiers. Yes, you need to use a good proportion of high HLB emulsifiers compared to the lipid content that you're trying to stabilize, otherwise you won't have a stable formula but then add a small amount of low HLB emulsifier to help bring down the excess HLB value and you'll eliminate your microfoam problem. Now if you're studying with us the terminology HLB and talking about these values will make complete sense. If you haven't started studying with us of course you can learn all about this with our courses. Um, you'll learn advanced emulsifying and formulating techniques in our certificate in advanced cosmetic science and our diploma of personal care formulation where we address these issues and many more in detail. I hope you found this video informative because definitely creating natural based emulsions and solving that whitening issue is something we get asked a lot. So the video today was all about showing you how to solve those problems. If you'd like more information or these example formulas so you can practice them yourself, please contact us info at personalcarescience.com.au I look forward to helping you solve your formulation issues in future videos.